dot shall we begin all yours ma'am thank you commander so good evening and uh, welcome everybody to geetham university's webinar on mapping your career path after education organized by geetham career guidance center and uh, it's a wonderful sunday evening and pretty good time to think about your long term plans uh, as the last two years particularly did not paint a good picture with uh, the employment rate surging to 10.72% amid covid-19 pandemic uh, yet there is a lot of positivity for all of you out there uh, there's a recent uh, report by the financial express uh, saying the digital upskilling may help revive job market and an estimated 500 million people in india will have acquired new digital skill sets so definitely there's uh, good times ahead even after the pandemic so now uh, what's important for us to understand that it is not just enough to merely secure a job after graduation but what is required is a holistic development and augmented classroom education with focused training in career specific skills to help you land just not just that dream job of yours but to make a sustainable career choice and i'm glad to say that all of this and much more is served by the uh, geetham career guidance center here and today in this webinar we'll see how all of it can be met and i'm sure there are a lot of curious audiences out there who want to throw their questions out so i am uh, glad to introduce the panelists for the evening so commander gurumurthy gangadharan is assistant dean career services and head gcgc and is a gold medalist from iit madras and alumnus of iim indore he is a retired naval officer whose endeavor is to groom young minds during their formative years and to guide them in the right path commander thank you so much for being with us today and welcome to the webinar our duty ma'am Now, going forward, we have uh, Mr. Sri Ram Sia, who is the director at Career Guidance Center at Geetham. He comes with over 33 years of experience in the corporate and higher education sector, and specializes in training and development as well as career enablement. He has worked with companies like Ramco System, Expertise Inc., NIT Limited, Sterling Computers, and Visya Bank Limited. Welcome, sir, to the discussion again. Thank you, ma'am. It's our privilege. And finally. we have ms uma devi the director career counseling and mentoring at geetham career guidance center backed with a masters degree in psychology and diploma in management she has over 3 decades of rich corporate and academic experience and has been with geetham for the last 10 years serving in both teaching and administrative capacity prior to joining geetham ms uma devi He was the vice president and branch head at HSBC Bank, and is passionate about using her corporate and academic experience in guiding students. Welcome, ma'am, to the panel. Thank you, ma'am. It's my pleasure. So, uh, I would like to throw open the forum to all of you. Commander, please take the lead and tell us all how GCGC has been doing much beyond just placement and enabling students to achieve their career fulfillment aspirations. Certainly. Good evening to all the panelists, the moderator, Rajeshwari Ma'am, and the student community. Hope to see you in the campus very soon. I am going to start talking about from the slide number one. And this is the bird's eye view of Geetham campus, which you are going to get into. This shot has been taken by self from top of the hill, which is there in Rishikonda. Very few colleges, universities can boast of this kind of greenery. Uh, whether it is the cricket stadium or the building surrounded by the green woods or the places uh, where you are going to spend most of the time, because Geetham strongly believes that the students need to spend as much time as possible outside the classrooms than in the classrooms, because the knowledge that you are going to gain by interacting with uh, fellow students from different streams of study, faculty members. University leaders is much more valuable than what the books could teach you within the classroom. So, thank you very much for the question. Uh, I, I'm sure you all would be aware that um, the student who is moving out of a uh, 10 plus school is always caught in the web of questions that run into his mind: uh, what kind of courses to choose, which college to choose, etc. Like you, I'm sure the majority of you have chosen engineering or sciences as your Choice of career option. That's where we are having this session. And so, once that path is very clear, let's ask questions like, what kind of uh, stream that I'm going to choose from? Am I going to follow the classmates who have already got into computer science? Am I going to take off, you know, take off from there and then join, say, biotechnology, electronics and communication engineering, electrical engineering? What kind of courses would fit me? So, this is the decision point number one, where you are at the junction and there are plenty of paths that there in front of you. Hopefully, by the end of the session, we should be able to give you some answers which will clarify your thought process and 
make your decision towards what kind of course that you are going to get into. The second question is, let's assume that you have taken a decision that you are going to follow a particular uh, course in a particular campus. After you come inside, the question is like, um, what kind of activities I'm going to be part of. This is very important because um, this will lay the path for the days to come in the sense that once you get inside a club, there are to start grooming yourself in that particular activity along with academics. And the bottom line is that Gitam is, in Gitam, we always assure you that academic excellence is the bottom line. We are not even going to talk about academic excellence because it is taken for granted. Uh, the kind of faculty that we have, kind of laboratory facilities that we have, leadership team that is there in place, and the university administration at the helm of affairs, the academic quality is ensured. What we are talking here is what are the additional things that you are going to get, the value addition that are going to enrich your resume as you keep graduating over the years. So the decision point two is, let's assume that I've decided on the course, decided the campus, what else can I do? So these two decision points make it very, very important for all the attendees who are present here, as well as the parents, the stakeholders, because it is the blood and sweat of the parents which ensures that the wards get the high quality education that we provide. Therefore, these two decision points make it very, very important for the student community to take a decision on the campus, kind of course, kind of opportunities that he or she is going to make use of in the case to come. We are also seeing that there is another new dimension which has come into our life that is impact of new normal in the sense that um, I'm sure uh, many of you or your parents have been working from home even uh, during these days to ensure that, that the home is taken care of. When you come to Gitam, there is enough number of initiatives to ensure that the learning is not at all disturbed, whether it is blended learning, investment in technology and tools, or world-renowned platforms like Coursera, all these are made available to the student community so that the learning is not disturbed. Second one is that the tools are available, how to make use of them either from classroom or from home. So blended learning is also introduced to the student community so that you don't get pinched by the new norm. Third one is the faculty are also equipped with tools and technologies to adapt the latest platforms that are available for smooth conduct of classrooms even during the new normal. We are also ensuring the sufficient health measures are in place. Uh, I'm sure you all will be aware that we have got the International of Medical Science and Research, our own hospital co-located, we have got a hospital for dental sciences. So your health care is taken care of. All these measures ensure that Ketam continues to move on, notwithstanding the constraints imposed by the normal. Now we move on to the most important question, why should I choose Gita? I'm sure all of you and your parents, stakeholders, including your teachers would have helped you to identify the kind of courses that you're going to get into, kind of institutes that are offering these courses. Before you choose any particular institute, particular university, particular stream, I would request all those who are present in this presentation to carry out a thorough research. What does that institute bring, for example, all the accreditations that we have glimpse of it, I am able to show it in the slide. Gitam University has been accredited with a special rank of A plus by NAC. They are also recognized as number one category university by University Grants Commission. The ICT has also approved all the courses that are being offered under technology. And we are very proud to say we have got a 40 years of committed excellence in our city. Moving on further, we have also been certified by the Tata Consequences Services as a great A institution. I'm very glad to announce that the Institute of Technology as well as the Institute of Science have joined hands with corporates, including Tata Consequences Services, to offer tailor-made programs. For example, the Institute of Technology offers four years CSBS. Same way, the Institute of Science offers BSc programs in collaboration with the corporates. Therefore, whenever you choose a campus, just pay attention to all the credentials that the university brings onto the plate. Why? Because the moment you get inside, these kind of services are going to be made available to you. In addition to that, the campus life, this is the most important part. As I said earlier, what you learn in the classroom is a mini school of what we offer, what, we, what you get to learn outside the classroom is the 
much more valuable than what you get to learn inside that classroom. Whether it is co-curricular activities, which are offered as part of the curriculum, which go along with the curriculum program, or extracurricular activities, which you get to indulge in if you are off working hours. All these are unique features to Githam University. For example, the, the glimpse of the cricket stadium is shown lush with green and sports facilities galore. Githam Sports is well known. Our students have made their marks in various track and field events, team sports, individual sports events in all university meets that happen in the country. We also have facilities including indoor basketball stadium, tennis courts, well-furnished gymnasium. All these are available, not only in our main campus, but also in gyms for the students to make use of. There is a separate directorate for physical education, which ensures that the physical wellness is taken care of. Recently, we celebrated International Yoga Day uh, online, of course. All this make uh, Geetam a unique place to be in. Not restricting ourselves with the physical activity, we also provide a uh, service-oriented mind through NCC and NSS. Our students from NCC have bad offers not only in corporates but also in government services, including Indian armed forces. Recently, we got approval for starting our own naval wing as well. Through these services, we bring in uh, mind orientation towards services plus discipline in the young minds of children who get admitted in Vita. We also provide a good number of opportunities for the student community to get developed in various facets of club activities, including music, dance, or debates, group discussions, etc. These are some of the glimpses which we organize as part of corporate events. When we celebrated International Women's Day in association with corporate major Accenture. Moving on to campus life. Camp the campus is lively when students are there. In fact, uh, last few months, uh, the campus was deserted because there is no life in the sense that there are no students. We always consider that consider that it is the students who bring life to the campus, be it uh, cultural programs, group activities, workshops, seminars, celebration of religious events, all uh, these activities are arranged for the betterment of the student community. This also brings in spirit core and bond between the student community. This also opens up a new avenue for students from engineering to mix with uh, students from science, students from medical school, students from management, international business, and schools from, uh, students from other countries. So it opens up a range of opportunities. For example, there is a problem in the community of medical science and research, which needs a little bit of assistance from engineering and designing a new device for a medical problem. A small group of students from various disciplines join hands to find a solution to an existing problem. This opens up plenty of opportunities for the student community to go beyond their curriculum and explore opportunities in other streams as well. All these are available online so the students can go through the website to understand what are the activities that are being conducted, whether it is a food festival, Rangoli competition, or daily games, all these are available online through the website. There are plenty of clubs, in fact, I think it runs into 30 to 40, whether it is for photography or for getting a drone done or color therapy, which takes care of arts or automotive club. All these clubs are available for student community across all the schools and colleges. It's not necessary that automotive club needs to be manned only by students from mechanical engineering. Even from biotechnology or from arts major, a student can become part of automotive club. And we have got uh, large auditoriums in which students get to showcase what they've got in the city, whether it is performance through drama or a group discussion or a case study presentation, debate, you name it, uh, the students get to be part of all these events in front of the entire university crowd. This gets in full of uh, exposure, gain confidence, make them as an all rounded personality by the time they graduate. We move on further. Industry relationship is very, very important because an academic institution cannot function all alone. Therefore, uh, association with the industry is very, very important because um, 
the students are prepared for the project that are going to come from the industries. We strongly believe that an engineer is one who is going to solve the problem of the future. Therefore, we are in constant touch with the industries to get the industry leaders to the campus, ensure that our students get an opportunity to interact with them. the industry leaders to know what's happening in the industry, what are the trends that are happening, changes in technology, how the industries are coping up with those challenges and is there a chance for our students to be part of those challenges. All this helps the students to know what's happening outside the campus and be prepared for the challenges as and when they move out of the graduation program. We also got a fully furnished knowledge resource center, uh, uh, given the link as well. We have got thousands of journals, e journals available to the student community even to, to go through in the comfort from the home. Our key, we keep our library open till late in the night and special buses are available for the student community to go back to the city as and when they finish their academic work. Knowledge Resource Center also provides access to magazines, journals, newspapers, online resources, all under one roof. Uh, this is another space where the students from one stream get to interact with faculty as well as student community from other streams, get to interact with uh, authors of books who come there to introduce the, their contribution to the student community. Therefore, uh, we would request you ask and when you make a trip to campus, not to miss out knowledge resource center. Please definitely explore the options available, go to a particular section, see whether your choice of books are available. Even if they are not available, if you do the list of the library and take it from you, they will be made available to you next time when you visit the campus. We also join hands with Coursera. Coursera is, uh, I'm sure you all would be aware of renowned uh, online platform for offering courses from universities across the globe. It's not necessary that um, you are restricted only to those teaching which are coming from our campus, but be exposed to the courses that are being offered at the international level. For example, I'm showing a simple certificate, which I did myself. I'm very happy to show this, that I did a short course on business strategy to understand how Apex patients are taken at the corporate managers. Uh, this is offered by Illinois University. Uh, this is free of cost for the student community. We don't charge our students. We want our students to explore all the courses that are available online through Coursera. Coursera is there in the curriculum right from first semester till you graduate. Uh, it is not only restricted to the student committee, even faculty members are requested to make use of this Coursera platform. So this is one of the most important value addition that we brought in for the students to be occupied during the new normal. The next strategic initiative that I'm going to spend time on is our venture development center. This is the brainchild of our chief innovation officer, Mr. Krish Nagada from Northeastern University. We have set up uh, a program called Guide and which BDC has started off the courses on entrepreneurship. I'm very happy to say the first batch of students are able to graduate from BDC and their entrepreneurial ventures are uh, well acknowledged, not only in Andhra, at the national level. This also opens up opportunities for the student community to explore their business ideas. For example, you have a business idea, but you don't know who to contact, how to nurture that idea, how to give shape to that idea, how to get venture capitalists to invest the necessary money into your project. VDC is here to help. VDC is one of our strategic initiatives through which we want to make our students to be young entrepreneurs and start their own projects into business models. I'm very happy to say that VDC has become a successful model in engaging students, not only from engineering, but also from other colleges, including arts, science, dental sciences, government studies, humanities, you name it, VDC has got students from all the colleges. So I would request all the GAD aspirants and other entrance examinations to explore VDC when you visit the campus. The uh, VDC has been, uh, the contribution of VDC has been well recognized uh, in the, all these startup cycles. This is a new clipping uh, where our honorable president, Shri Bharat, has spoken about the relevance of entrepreneurship in schools and colleges and how Gita University is invested heavily to get this aspect embedded in the minds of the young students who enter the province of Gita University. I'm very glad to say that our team built on our group of four finally engineering students who formed that team built on 
have won many laurels in various events related to entrepreneurship and won a good amount of uh, prize. Of course, the prize money doesn't matter. What matters is the recognition for their efforts and how the corporate evangelists have joined hands with the young entrepreneurs to give shape to their idea. This is the first of the startup that is going to spread its wings in the real world. So I've been talking a lot. I would request Rajesh Man if there are any questions, I would be able to focus on those particular areas. What do you So thank you so much, Commander. That was a very balanced view of what Geetam has to offer and how GCGC will just not get you a job, but do much more than that. And do, we do have certain questions. And uh, one uh, question would be, uh, which is a better course between CSE and ECE? And which do we have a better future in? And uh, are the courses going to be online in future going forward? OK. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you all have seen that ad, right? All this course pandemic, and, uh, I'm going to CSE. Uh, I'm also going to CSE. It says that everybody follows the data. I'm a mechanical engineer, core mechanical engineer, uh, so I can tell you confidently that whenever the corporate recruiter comes, uh, I'll give a small example. What the corporate recruiter is interested in is a good quality white rice in a buffet. I'm sure we all have attended buffet, right? What we pick up first is the rice. The rice has to be of good quality, well cooked, white rice. With that white rice, I add little bit of sam sambar, it becomes sambar rice. I add a little bit of rasam, it becomes rasam rice. I add a little bit of ghee, it becomes ghee rice. I add a little coconut, coconut rice. What the cor corporates want is a well-balanced, qualified engineer. The branches do not matter because the corporate is looking at various projects and the projects come with various requirements. If the engineer who is moving out of Ethan is ready to learn, ready to absorb the latest technologies, ready to face challenges in that particular technology. Technology. Take it from me, it's going to be highly successful. It doesn't matter whether you are coming from computer science engineering, electronics, and communication engineering, or mechanical engineering. What you should be, you should be a good qualified engineer, good quality engineer, ready to learn the technologies as they come, as and when they come. Why? Because your learning doesn't stop within the campus. The moment you get inside the corporate, take it from me. The first day when you go, there will be an Abinishio training program for you to introduce the technologies on which the corporate is working on. Thereafter, they expect you to absorb the technology, do projects, or solve the problems in those projects, get revenue for the corporate, go up in that career track. Even if you want to start your own career or you want to pursue higher studies, take it from me. What is important is that you should be ready to learn. Branches do not matter. For example, an electronics communication engineer with level of computational skills is always preferred over a computer science engineer. Why? Because electronics communication engineer has got core engineering knowledge in the branch of Electronics, in addition to that, is also good in computational skills. Take it from me, irrespective of the branch of engineering, computational skills are must because working from home is possible only when you know how to operate a computer, right? Therefore, I would request all attendants to keep this point in mind. Branches do not matter. Learning abilities, willing to learn, willing to adapt technologies matter a lot. There. Don't worry about the branches. Choose the branch, what you want to do, but Ensure that you also get certified in computational skills. I might be a biotechnology engineer, but I should be able to do a little bit of computer programming, computer coding, operate a computer, work on the systems. Ensure that results are produced through computers. Computers have become inseparable in our life. That's why we are attending the session through Zoom, right? Therefore, branches do not matter. Follow your interest, but be good in computational skills. It doesn't mean the moment I enter civil engineering, no, I've got nothing to do with computers. No. Civil engineering has got everything to do with computer, whether it is computer data design or smart city planning, devices that are needed for implementation of smart city, all these involves computer engineering. Therefore, I would request students to be open in their approach towards selecting a branch. Computer science alone cannot survive. For computer science to be successful, they need other branches of engineering. For example, if I want to open an IT park, I need a civil engineer to come and design the IT park in such a way that it is the it's a world-class facility. I want a mechanical engineer to come and set up all the systems that are needed to run the generators, ensure that I get good quality water. I need an electrical engineer to come and establish power systems, power transmission, and maintenance. I need an electronics and communication engineer to make the city smart. Finally, as a computer science engineer, I'm going to come and work. Therefore, computer science alone cannot survive. All the branches of engineering are like these five pillars. They coexist. When they are together, the engineering branches will be successful. I hope I answered that. 
Thank you so much, Commander. You put it very nicely. It's the will to attain knowledge altogether than just focusing on a course. So thank you. Moving on, uh, we have Ms. Uma. We'll move on to the next speaker for the evening. And uh, Ms. Uma will tell us more about how GCGC through mentorship programs is assisting students in getting better. Ms. Uma, over to you. Thank you, uh, Rajeshwari. Behind every great achiever, there is a great mentor. Every great achiever is inspired by a great mentor. I don't think uh, you can find a person who's, uh, who's done well in his life who would say, I've done it all on my own. There would be somebody who would have been a guiding force. So career counseling and mentoring is one of the essential features in terms of uh, especially a student achieving or achieving his fulfillment as a, for a career. Again, when we talk about fulfillment and career, we're not restricting ourselves to campus placements. It could be higher education, uh, whether you're talking about in India or abroad, it could be entrepreneurship. It could be alternative careers. You would want to get into civils, IAS, whatever it is. So whatever you require, you, you would need a guiding factor there. So career counseling and mentoring, which is part of Youth and Career Guidance Center, uh, is one of the essential uh, factors in guiding a student. Coming to uh, uh, the need for this, most of you are at the, at, uh, maybe in your teens, moving out of schools and uh, junior colleges into a university. Because when you're talking about Geetam, it is a university atmosphere. It's just not an affiliated college. So you would be having a different uh, environment. So getting used to this environment, uh, getting uh, understanding the opportunities that are there, not getting lost in all these is very, very important for you to have a clear path and a direction. So you would require a student at that age would require certain handholding where you can be moved from, uh, from a school uh, kid into a future uh, and professional. So all this is required where we talk about uh, how do you, what do you know about yourself? Most of you at this point of time, even a little later, if we ask you to un, uh, I mean, explain or describe yourself in terms of what you are as a person, it is not easy. I think each of you can uh, try it out. And uh, this transition needs definitely a, an adult support. So the mentor, the teachers in Geetam will be providing you that support, will be there with you throughout your journey in Geetam and make you understand uh, what you would be good at. It's, it's a self-discovery. It's not that they would tell you, but you would be starting to look at yourself, understand, and then discover what should be your career, what should be your future. For that, the support of the faculty is always there. So self-discovery, you would be... Once you understand, we actually have an assessment process where you would be understanding what you are as a person, something like your personal profile. And once you have that and understand the various opportunities that are there, what should I do? Where should I go? I mean, do I want to move into higher studies? Do I want to work for some time? It's, there are so many opportunities that there is scope for uh, ambiguity and confusion. Maybe it's scope for you to follow your friends rather than what is right for you. So this sort of a dilemma when you are stuck into that's where your mentor comes into picture so the mentor draws the path for you or makes you draw the path for yourself and makes you do uh, or uh, i mean enhance your skills to enable you reach that career goal of yours so there would be an assessment as i said a self discovery you would assessment is you would be getting your personal profile it's like your personality profiling and uh, that can help your mentor also to do, to guide you in terms of uh, what would be the right career choice for you. So once you are guided, you agree upon, or you understand that this is the right one, then how to go around getting into it. So there are enough of opportunities on the campus for you to get trained, whether it's for campus placements or for higher studies, or whether you're talking about a, uh, an entrepreneurship. So whichever your career, whichever your future is, you would be guided and, uh, I mean, you'd be guided in a manner where you would be enabled to uh, reach your career aspiration. So this is one of the strongest factors that we have in at Geetam. You, we have faculty mentors, 
all the faculty, uh, each faculty will be having around uh, 20 to 25 students and they would be with them throughout their life in Geetam. If you're joining in engineering, for example, all the four years, you have the same mentor who would understand you, would be able to guide you, whom you can turn to for any advice, support, whatever it is. So they would be more like a, a friend and a guide to you rather than just a teacher. So these faculty mentors uh, are trained faculty mentors. They are accredited to mentor students. And uh, GCGC supports uh, the fa faculty mentors in terms of uh, various career aspirations that are available, uh, opportunities that are available, and uh, what is the, uh, how do you uh, train yourself? Or how, how, how do you need the training? Wh which area do you require training? So they would be supporting you and they would be with you throughout your journey in, in Geetam. So faculty mentors are the, uh, your uh, guiding force behind them. And in this, the mentoring process, the, uh, when you really look at the mentoring process, all of you, the assessments would actually give, in, give you a benchmark saying where you stand. And then you, along with your mentor, would be setting a goal for yourself. If I've joined today in Geetam, okay, by the time I leave Geetam campus, where should I be? What should I do? Should I go out of college with a job? Or should I get uh, admitted to a prestigious institution abroad or in India? or whatever it is. So a goal is set uh, in discussion with your mentor and then you are guided. So you, as I said, guidance is a crucial factor here. You will be there. There is no restriction on uh, how much time you would want to spend your uh, with your mentor basing on your need. The mentor is ready to give you his or her time to guide you. And to obviously academic excellence will be coming with it because uh, you have somebody to turn to who would be able to tell you where you need to work upon. Skill development that is required to uh, reach the right uh, career for you is provided. And ultimately, the fulfillment that is getting into what you desired will be achieved with uh, the support of these mentors. So this mentoring process is there across the three campuses in all the institutes. And uh, you will have a focused mentor whom you can turn to for any support. So at any point of time, you have somebody who can guide you in terms of whenever you are in confusion, when you're not sure about what to do, or even when you know what to do, how to go about achieving it. So this is one of the unique features of Geetham. Uh, and uh, definitely, I would say there are a lot of uh, students who excelled in their uh, careers because of this mentorship uh, process, which is there in Geetham. These are very few examples that we can uh, show you about students who really uh, reached, as I said, premier institutes, whether it's in India and uh, abroad, doing well in life and uh, who keep telling us that uh, the mentors uh, were very uh, crucial for them uh, to have achieved whatever they've done today. So this fulfillment opportunities are there. Uh, but it is for the student, ultimately mentors are there, but it is for the student who should be able to discover for himself or herself what exactly is right for them. So that is where uh, the crux of everything lies. Thank you, ma'am. In fact, I would like to add uh, by saying that uh, the mentor and mentees get to meet online through an online app in the sense that the mentor is just uh, app available. As and when you want to contact in the middle of the night, you want to send a message, you can text him and there'll be a record of uh, mentor mentee meeting. And the record of descriptions will also be there for the heads of institute, heads of department to know what kind of descriptions are going on, whether you are reaching those milestones that have been set by you and being monitored by the mentor. Therefore, uh, enough technology is available between the mentor and mentees even to take care of the new normal. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, uh, ma'am, for the wonderful uh, understanding of how it's not just about uh, the courses, but uh, how mentoring also helps students uh, form their spine in the professional sector. So uh, the questions per se here are more uh, generic. They uh, Most of them would want to know if the courses are going to be online, and there's a pile of questions on that. So I think there's a general query, and if you can clear the air on that. Yeah, I mean... Uh... We are in uncertain terms, as everybody is aware of. We would love all the students to be on campus. And uh, I, I mean, I would say if there is a remote chance, whatever the earliest chance that they can be on campus, 
we would be having classes uh, on the campus. But in the eventuality that the pandemic continues and there is an issue about it with the restrictions imposed, we are forced to actually have online classes. Yeah, Commander, sir, you want to say something? Yeah, uh, I would like to say that uh, as you can see, me and Shiram are already in office. Uh, it is the students who are not coming to the campus, but the staff are in campus. So those who wish to come to campus, explore opportunities, meet leaders, get your queries cleared, get your cobwebs removed, please feel free to visit our campus. This is the best time to visit campus because the crowd is very less. So come visit, make a decision. But I can tell you, efforts are on to introduce blended learning as and when the governments, whether it is state or central or the the agencies that are uh, taking care of COVID protocols, all of us will be the first one to introduce because we strongly, we in Kitam strongly believe that students are the life of the campus. Without students, the campus is lifeless with people like me and Shiram. But moment the campus is reopened, we'll be the first one. And there are enough procedures in place to ensure that we get healthy and hygienic campus. At each and every place, you will see that uh, social distancing is maintained, classrooms are adapted, and uh, those who cannot uh, come to the classrooms are able to get a classroom atmosphere. Uh, I can tell you about a roving camera which ensures, captures the entire class when a faculty is taking class to take care of those students who are attending the class and those who are attending online. Therefore, my suggestion is visit the campus, understand the facilities, take a call thereafter, enjoy the facilities as and when the campus is reopened, come and join us. With that, we move on to the third part of this presentation. What do you know? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Commander. So we move on to the third speaker for the evening and the final one. So uh, Mr. Sriram, please uh, take on stage and uh, tell us about uh, what is it at WISAC uh, for GCGC and what can the participants expect? Oh yeah, sure. Uh... Thank you so much and uh, good evening to one and all. Uh, it's uh, my pleasure uh, representing uh, uh, GCGC from uh, Vaisa campus. So what you see over here is a huge auditorium that we have where uh, students come in during the campus placement drives. You know, they interact with the HRs from different companies. And then, you know, uh, at the end of the day, the same place uh, becomes very joyful and with a lot of cheerful moods for many of them because they'll be walking out with the offers in their hands. So I, I wish and pray that, you know, uh, uh, we also see you in this particular place pretty soon. Okay, once things become normal. Okay, so this is one of my uh, very fabric uh, quote, I would say. Why are you trying to so hard to fit in when you were born to stand out? This I want each one of my friends who are there listening to and watching this particular program to understand. I want to relate this to a very small story, the story of a dragonfly. Now, there was a pond with a lot of water bugs uh, living inside, deep inside the pond and uh, you know, they can never see the sunlight and they were very happy, you know, moving around in that mud with their quick movements from here to there. But uh, as the time passed, uh, they, they also observed that a colony of, uh, you know, the uh, water bugs uh, caught on to the uh, stem of the water, uh, you know, the lily, and then they climbed up and then they never returned back. And the rest of the water bugs which are living in the colony were very curious. So, and this kept on, you know, going as a kind of a regular thing. And one fine day, they all assembled and the leader of that uh, colony and then he said, uh, okay, uh, I'm, I'm giving you all an instruction. Whoever is going up that particular stem next time, will go see what is happening there and then will come back and tell me or tell anyone of us what's happening outside. So why is that the people who climb over that particular stem is not coming back to our colony? And one fine day, another colony of water bug also climbed up to the stem. And then uh, after some time, just they were about to hit the surface of the water. They found themselves to be on the top of the leaf of the lily. And the moment the bug went over there, uh, something happened to it. And it went through a small pain. And suddenly the bug uh, saw four wings coming out of its body and then a long tail coming out and then a uh, head and then a beautiful color getting added to that. Of course, it was a little painful when, while you know, the bug was transforming into a dragonfly. But 
once it became a kind of a small insect with four wings and a small tail and the sun rays started uh, you know uh, falling onto that and then uh, it just raised its wing and then without even knowing without even realizing the dragonfly started flying it just came up above the water level and then it started flying going round and round the pond and then it started seeing a completely a different world and as it was very joyful and then going round the pond and then you know seeing different heights different colors of life something something completely different which it has never seen inside the pond it just realized the promise that uh, it made to that community saying that oh once i come out and if i see something i should go back and tell the others what is happening outside so it just went as close as to the water surface but then it could not enter in and then it just again bounced back and that's the time it realized that oh my purpose in life is to be a dragonfly not to remain like a water bug so now that i have become a dragonfly even if i want to go back and then tell my fellow friends who are living in the colony that life outside is much more beautiful i cannot because i have transformed into a dragonfly from a water bug and let me tell you friends each one of us have different point in time when this transformation happens in our life and let me tell you today is your day to become from a water bug to a dragon fly with that note let me move forward what's the purpose of learning yes you have been in school and then learning and uh, the last one year through online so why did we learn at all is it just to get marks is it just to get a satisfactory score and then get a, a box of chocolate from parents or just to say congratulations to my neighbor friend no the purpose of learning is to become a better person in life we we all need to be a human so education should have value to us to remain as a human and once we are human then you know many good thing happens in our life the transformation happens and what is more important for the transformation is the knowledge and from where can i get this knowledge this knowledge i can get it only from the classroom or the four walls and today some technology called zoom or whatever you may want to call it as so i need to learn i need to learn i need to learn and once i learn what i get is knowledge so once i get knowledge through my learning then what i get is that i have some some options in front of me like what commander explained whether i should get into a job or i should get into a higher studies or i should join government forces or what are the options in front of me but then i would say you have to choose a career what's the difference between job and a career in short job gives you money and then job gives you a short life but a career gives you a long term perspective of your life it gives you a lot of growth it gives you a lot of learning so you should look for a career you don't you are not born to get into a job right so that's the very purpose of learning and with covid for the last one and a half years the whole thing has changed the i'm i'm sure many of your parents were working or who are into business now things have changed for them now what are the key drivers for the future what we thought could be permanent is not no longer permanent it could be as simple as the person who was existing there yesterday is not there today so things are changing that fast so drastic so how are we going to catch up on that so please listen to us very carefully and and these uh, slides are going to give you a lot more information so one is when we say computer skills and what is more important in computer skill is the data skills you should know how to analyze the data so today what happens is that you know we all have a lot of information there is information explosion every single newspaper that you read gives the same information but in different flavor you read indian express that tells me saying that okay, vaisag will get rain and the hindu says vaisag will have clouds today but what happens at the end of the day no rain no clouds it was a sunny day but every single paper gives me a lot of information every single news channel gives me a lot of information so today the challenge that you have is that 
which information is right. So I need to be very, very sure about which information is relevant to me and how do I process that information. So you need to have data skills. Because I have abundant data today, information is coming from every walks of life. How do I analyze this information? How do I process this information? So you need to have artificial intelligence. Does that mean that human doesn't have intelligence to go? No, yes, we do have. But then in a short span of time, if I have to process, let's say, 100 million information, I cannot do it. So I need to go for some artificial intelligence. It is simulation of human intelligence using computers. And today, where are we using this? This is used everywhere today. A very simple thing is that in all your mobile application, you have a location update. It, it quickly, you know, the moment you open the browser, it looks into the location from where you are opening the browser and then tells you the cafeteria close by or malls close by or the transport facility that is available over there. So intelligence is built into your mobile today, a blockchain. So we are completely moving towards digital economy today. No cash. So in fact, RBI in India is talking about saying that if you take more than five times from your ATM, there is going to be a fee of 10 rupees more. And even a small petty shop which sells, you know, the tender coconut says that, sir, 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 no cash, pay through Paytm. So today, to that extent, it has become a digital economy. But how are we going to promote all these things? So the, the future is going to be for a lot of sales and marketing. Of course, for the short of time, I'm not getting into the details, but then sales and marketing is something which is becoming the world. In fact, I would say almost 40 to 50% of the global operation is going to be governed by the sales and marketing. And the pandemic has given a new life to healthcare and nursing. It is not that it wasn't there earlier. It was there, but then the pandemic brought out, you know, the healthcare and the nursing services to the light of this world. And today, without them, uh, our question, our survival for tomorrow is a big question mark, right? And creativity, how creative you are. When I say creativity is not just, you know, into fine arts, creativity in everything, how creative on, you know, solving the day to day problems. How do you solve the ecological problem? How do you solve the environmental problem? How do you solve the pollution? How do you solve food problem? It could be anything. And today there are plenty of opportunities for you in the global organizations like WHO, World Bank, UN. They all look for, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, all that you need to be is a graduate of uh, arts or uh, business studies or engineering, but do you have creativity today? So these are all the things that drives the future. And as you join a campus today and then after four years or three years or whatever the duration when you pass out, this is what you will see when you step out of a campus. So what are these very specific skills? As I said, one, analytical thinking. You need to analyze the data that you have to analyze the information that's there in front of you and you have to solve a problem. And to solve a problem, the conventional method doesn't work. Again, the best example is a COVID right in front of us. The usual injection doesn't work. The usual medicine doesn't work. You have to be creative. So every single company is creating their own doses, vaccines saying that, okay, so this works against COVID. So you need to be creative and you need to be creative in a shorter span of time. You cannot say, okay, so in one seminar I attended with Geetam, they said creative, I'll take 20 years to be creative. No, not possible. You have to fix the time frame, and you have to be creative within that particular time frame. And you need to be flexible in that also. So today there is no single role assigned. Each one of us are expected to play multiple roles in life, whether that is professional or personal. You need to be flexible. You need to be adaptive. And any information that you get, you need to reason out today. What is good? What is not so good? How do I? You have to ask a lot of questions. And whatever I said, analytical thinking, problem solving, creativity, flexibility, and reasoning today, it is all embraced by technology. So no technology, no life today, irrespective of whether you are going to be a mechanical engineer or a business graduate, or whether you are going to doing, uh, do your science or your uh, English literature, technology plays a very, very vital role. Having said, what are the trends? I'm sorry. What are the trends of the future? 
ai optimized manufacturing the manufacturing has changed now you will see robots sitting inside the manufacturing plant so will it remove the human beings from the monotonous jobs yes it is going to remove the human beings right the 9 to 5 kind of jobs will go off today and the second is prevention through diet everyone is talking about diet and you know uh, how do i take care of my own self that has become very important today and 5g while in india we are still debating about 3g and 4g's but then 5g's have already come into existence in many part of the world and today the telemedicine plays a very very crucial role and the backbone for the telemedicine is 5g today robotic retailing there are shops in some of the metros where you don't find people you just walk in and then a small robot will follow you and then you don't have to touch anything thanks to pandemic and you just look at the thing wearing a glass uh, mm. augmented reality and the virtual reality you just look at your shelf and the robot will pick and then you know send it to the billing desk and ai based construction sometime back commander was talking about how you know it is there in every aspect of construction and today it has become little more uh, you know beyond that and ai is assisting the construction process and the best example for this is a sardar patel statue uh, that is there in our country and also the burj khalifa which is there in dubai you know lot of analysis goes into construction today and climate change we are fighting it out we all enjoyed we we allowed you to enjoy something today but your generations will they see water will they see forest will they see sea will they see land big question mark so today everyone is talking about climate change clean energy even andhra pradesh government has announced saying that okay now solar panels will be provided at subsidized rates to houses biotechnology now with pandemic biotechnology has once again come to the top now a lot of research in terms of how do we prevent such kind of diseases and while all these things are happening through information information collection information processing generating more data and also this has given opportunity for people to come in and then do unwanted work with the data so now it has become very very critical and essential to look after the cyber security how do i keep my data safe in the world wide web and how do i automate some of the jobs which are no longer need to be done by human being and today with the raising cost i i don't have time to wait for something for example uh, a person has lost his hand in an accident so but then where will i go for additional hand or i cannot manufacture just one hand from another human being now addictive manufacturing which is otherwise called as 3d printing using 3d printing they manufacture a human hand or for that matter any human organ today including heart and they put it back and how much times are does it take to manufacture a heart few hours so all these things are changing and then so when i say 2025 these are all the trend setters and then how long it will go it will go up to 2050 that's what is the predictions of the world and when we also say that the future is with lot of technologies more importantly for the girl students the future looks much more brighter some of you may say why only for girl students in fact just on the lighter side i see that you know uh, the girl students are willing to travel the girl students are willing to get into a marketing job or they are willing to do all the challenges but then i get a request from boys parents saying that sir he is my only son so can i get a job only in vaisag i don't want to send him to any other place right okay but then at the same time whether we like it or not the women are becoming much more smarter not that they were not smarter but then now they have got ample opportunity exposure and so this what is the uh, world economic forum survey result which says that 12% of the women force will be in cloud computing 26% would be in data and ai 40% just look at the number 40% in marketing sales 37% content production so you know writing the storyboards and writing scripts there's lot of things right so 57% people and culture which is into hr practices or people management 
hospitality, all these kind of things is 65% and product development is about 35%. Okay, so this how the future looks like to each one of you. And what is Geetam doing to enable this? It is not that we do different things, and but we do things differently. We look at the holistic development of you. We understand we are all humans and you as a human with a lot of expectations walking into the campus, whether that's going to be virtually, physically is the next one. But then we are concerned about your holistic development. First, we want to give you all the human values, the ethics. What is the purpose of my existence in the world? And how do I be a good human? To how do I achieve my goal? In fact, we have a wonderful program called um, uh, Geetam Future Leadership Development Program. So which helps you to become a, a overall person. I can say you can become a professional, whether I'll be good at mechanical engineering or uh, electronics and communication engineering is secondary, but then can I be a human being first of all? Yes. And how do we do this? There's a lot of training programs that are planned at different point in time. And some of them are part of your semester. Some of them are outside your semester programs. And these programs are very intensive in nature because we wanted to give you those values. We are not interested in just teaching you. At the end, we want you to have the transformation, the water buck to dragonfly. And you will go through a lot of mock sessions to experiment yourself to understand whether you have progressed or not, and if you need some assistance. So as Uma Ma'am said, there will be expert interaction, the mentorship will happen. There'll be a lot of people waiting outside saying, oh yes, you want to have some help? Yes, we are ready to help and we are here to guide you. And once you are ready with this holistic development mock sessions and the expert interaction, then we will expose you to industry collaboration. How? In the form of internship. In fact, uh, last week, we got a couple of uh, internship from two companies, uh, Talent Serve offering about 121 internships and also the uh, Takshila Consulting offering about uh, 92 internship programs and Takshila offering, you know, once students complete their internship, they get about four lakhs per annum package and then uh, uh, Talent Serve, they would be getting about six lakhs uh, per annum. Uh, that's the kind of packages that they get. So this industry collaboration helps you to understand lot more better. Whatever you have learned in the classroom, whatever you have learned from the experts, now you are going to experience it. So that experiential learning will help you to do that transformation. And the transformation not driven by anyone of us. We are here as a catalyst. We are here as a uh, agent to enable that transformation in you. All right. So these are all the things that we do very differently at Geetham compared to any other institution. So here is what the outcome of that doing things differently. Uh, yes, everyone is going through pandemic, but then even in the pandemic, so we got, uh, today we stand at more than 3,200 offers for the Geetam students. And then as Kamenda was uh, talking about the Delta Now startup, uh, they have won many competitions and uh, today the product is one of the best product that is available in the industry to get into campus automations. And uh, Geetam, as a university is standing on the at, at the ATN rank in the QS World rating. In fact, uh, this ranking earlier was called as uh, Times Global Rating of the Educational Institution. So today it is there, and then they have an international ranking expert group which does this ranking. It is not done by Geetam or it is not done by anybody from India. So it is a, a global rating. So it is not that easy to you know uh, get that kind of ranking. Uh, from the global institutions. Every single institution will compete in this, right? So now the trends, you know, uh, now with the pandemic, we have set a lot of the first of its kind, the blended learning. The blended learning, yes, you have a digital learning, you have online learning, and you also have the ILT in instructor-led training program. And to enable this much more, we also ink packs with the uh, universities from the other countries. Why? Because we need to take the good practices across. So today there is nothing called as a boundaries of the world or boundaries of the countries. We all collaborate. We all, uh, you know, uh, uh, take input and give input to each other. We all coexist in the whole system, right? And then uh, many of our students got national level awards and state level awards in the NSS. And very importantly, during this particular COVID, 
the campus is absolutely ready to receive anyone in because we have such a kind of a uh, very, very hygiene campus and maintained, uh, uh, if not on a daily basis, probably every alternate hours, the whole campus is sanitized and it is kept clean. So here are some of the differentiators. And for those MBA graduates, so uh, even in the pandemic period, so we got the maximum number of MBA students placed. And Accenture gave offers again. So we stand about uh, 3, 000, uh, sorry, 300 offers today. And then uh, Amazon giving us offers with 19 lakhs per annum. And uh, today, just read that message there, demand for good Indian MBAs on the rise due to COVID-19. So when whole world is saying that, uh, you know, because of COVID, we are, not, we are all losing job and uh, there is no opportunity for students. But that, that's a kind of a myth or a kind of a wrong statement. Yeah, here is a news from India today. So it is not from Geetam. So, so you can understand what is happening around. But then what is more important to note over there is a good Indian MBA, right? So how you need to be good? You need to transform yourself from a water bug to a dragonfly. All right. So whatever you want in the whole process. So we are here to nurture your talent, right? So we got so many number of offers from uh, TCS and CTS. So we have our alumni who have become IAS and uh, you know some of them are in IPS, they are into government offices and uh, B school doing extremely well. And we have the venture development cell which is there to nurture your, okay, I want to uh, become an entrepreneur or I have a family business, can I better it? You can always walk in over here and take advices and consultants are available for you to give you those kind of inputs and you can carry on with your business. Just to add, uh, Air Engineering from Hyderabad also merits a uh, mention here because it's a niche branch catering to the air industry needs. I'm sure you all would be aware that uh, the air industry is taking the skies in India. We are open to FDA, so plenty of uh, new air industries are coming, including air maintenance, flying operations, or maintenance of aircraft, everything put together. And our Air Engineering branch in Hyderabad takes care of all those needs. So in case you want to be in the specialized branch, please choose the engineering from Hyderabad campus. Go to Shina. Yeah. Thank you, Commander, for that input. In fact, I'll just add to what Commander said. And see, due to pandemic, many of the aircrafts have been grounded. And then, you know, uh, there are very few aircrafts flying now. And uh, once life resumes, so all these aircrafts need to be certified before they could, uh, you know, touch the skies. And uh, they need a lot of people to, uh, you know, uh, maintain this and then certify the uh, worthiness of the aircraft to take onto the skies. And in fact, there is a specialized area called MRO, maintenance, repair and overhauling, right? In fact, uh, only the aircraft engineers or the students with that kind of specialization only will be preferred. So there is a world of opportunities for you guys. So some of the glimpses, so because they, uh, they, they got their dream achieved, right? So our students, the proud students with Deloitte, proud students with TCS, Accenture, right? It's not only the students are proud about it. And in fact, it makes life to the student. And it also means life to some of their families. Some of the families depend on this. They say, yes, my son or uh, daughter has to go for a job to come up in life. They have to just take care of themselves, take care of us also in the family. So it means a lot. So we are here to enable that success to you. So once again, it is very important whether you want to uh, remain like a water bug or a dragonfly. And our wish is that you transform yourself into a dragonfly and you see a better world. And it is very important. The future depends on what you do today. Thank you so much. Over to you, man. Thank you so much, Mr. Sriram. I think that was so wonderfully put by you, the transformation, especially in the student to a professional phase. And uh, speaking of transformation and development, I would uh, request Commander to please uh, let us know a little about the uh, Geetam Future Leaders Development Program, which was recently launched, and uh, how it expands our vision for the students. Uh, it's a strategic initiative, um, the sense that um, uh, Gitam has got a large number of students uh, and there are few people who are the front runners who have got ability to learn faster compared to other people and they get bored by the normal speed of uh, 
pedagogy. So they always approach us saying that, okay, we have to reach our lessons, what is there in store for us? In order to cater to the needs of those people who have the ability to master things faster, recently we have launched Geekdom Future Leader, Leaders Development Program under Learning and Development. Uh, Dr. Chitra, who is from industry, has taken the ownership of this program. This program has been launched for the engineering students. Top students across all the branches, across all the campuses have been identified through a preparation process. And they have been put through a differentiated learning program, fast-paced, uh, catering to the needs of their learning needs. The moment they finish this program, thereafter, their grooming starts. What we are going to do is, uh, we are not promising any outstanding opportunities, but we are going to make leaders out of them. The leadership skills that are there, unpolished, we are going to add the cutting edge advantage to these people to bring out the leaders in them. Through this, what we are going to do is uh, introduce these leaders to the visiting industries and see whether there can be a match between the expectations from the industry and the students who are uh, groomed as leaders. Through this program, uh, we are conducting a series of lectures through the industry leaders. The first one was conducted by a vice president from TCS. He came and spoke to our students. Contact, this program is totally conducted, coordinated by the students who have been handpicked for JPTP. By interacting with the leaders in a storytelling format, the leader is able to share his success story and motivate the students to aim for high. In addition to that, they will be getting mentored by the university leaders. For example, the president of Gita Mood, uh, mentor three to four students from JFLDP, starting from Honorable Vice Chancellor to the Pro VCs, DS of Engineering Management Sciences, heads of institute, heads of department will handpick few of the students from JFLDP, ensure that leadership lessons are important through practical experience. By doing all this, what we are doing, doing is produce, say, 500 to 600 leaders across all the three campuses every year. This year, it has been started as a pilot project for technology. We are in the process of expanding it to management slowly. We will move on to sciences, humanities. Thereafter, look at other courses as well. Slowly, there will be a strict competition for the students to get into GFLDP, to get into differentiated learning, accelerated learning programs, etc. Every student in GFLDP should aspire to be part of GFLDP. My sincere request to all those who are listening to this session, aim for GFLDP, be part of Thank you so much, Commander. That was uh, very uh, informative. And I'm sure with uh, today's session, most of them who are looking to join us would have, have just found ample number of reasons to do so. There are still certain questions which uh, definitely we we'll take up and uh, links have been shared in the chat box so you can uh, refer the links for further details. So uh, with this, we come to a close for today's session. There's a lot to learn from all the information shared by each one of you, I'm sure. Thank you all for joining. And I hope this conversation helped the participants get a clear understanding of Keetham's Career Guidance Center and how it will shape you up for not only a better future, but also for a better and sustainable career. So once again, to remind everybody, we have a deadline for the 5th of July, that is tomorrow, for the GAT Phase 3 applications. And the application and link details have been shared with you through the chat. So please do apply. This is your last chance to do it. So thank you once again for joining. Thank you all. Wish you all the very best. Thank you all. Thank you. All and the, all best. the best.